Let's talk about the dynamic triggering engine. Now, it's probably the most powerful feature of optical flares, but I will admit it's a little bit nerdy. However, if you give it a chance, I promise it's awesome. It's, uh, it's kind of like the girl at the library. She's got glasses on, you know, her hair's up. You know, she's cute, but she's a little nerdy. But if you just give her a... Okay, maybe that's not the best example. Um, let's just take a look at what it's capable of doing, and uh, I'll let you guys uh, fill in the rest of that story. So here we have a lens flare, and uh, it's one of the presets, and it has some dynamic triggering on it. So as I move the lens flare to the edge of the frame... You can see we get the splash of these elements coming on, and uh, it's a pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing. It even has a little bit of triggering in the middle of the frame. As it gets to the middle, it kind of brightens up a little bit. Now, one of the things we've done is we've added an indication when an element has dynamic triggering, and that's this red stripe. So if we click on that layer and we scroll down, we can check out the dynamic triggering engine. So right now the light source is being triggered from the center so you can see the trigger mode is the light position and the trigger type is the center. So if we preview the trigger it's this big red area and so as that light touches that area it gets 55 percent brighter and it also changes color slightly. So we can turn the brightness amount up and maybe we can make the color, you know, we can make it turn gold. I mean, this is extreme. So now if we move the light over the trigger area, you can see it gets brighter and it also turns orange. This is the whole idea behind dynamic triggering. It's animation without keyframes. It's animation based on rules, based on a trigger type. You can control it from the border, from the center, from the light. And uh, there's a few different examples I kind of want to go over with you. So let's take a look. So I'm going to load a preset that doesn't have dynamic triggering. So we'll click on this air missile preset. And it's just a standard lens flare. And what I want to do is add a little bit of a gleam as the lens flare goes to the outside of the frame. And then I want to come over to the lens objects and add a glow element. I'll click on that. Now it's pretty bright, but uh, we're going to work on it. First, I want to change the stretch amount so that we squeeze it down to a very thin element. I can solo it and you can see what that looks like. And then what I want to do is set the auto rotate to the center of the frame. So I'll click that. And then I can set the rotation to 90 and it'll almost point to the center. But I only want this to show up when my lens flare goes to the edge of the frame. So what we'll do is we'll scroll down to the dynamic triggering engine that's available on all of the objects. And what I'm going to do is first set the object's brightness to zero. And that's because I want it to be off until it is triggered. Now the trigger type is defaulted to the border and the object's position. So that's already set. So all I have to do is turn the brightness offset up. So we'll set it to maybe 200. And then if we move the element down to the edge of the frame, you can see it turns on. Now we can preview that trigger and it's pretty large. So we might bring the inner and outer fall off range in so that it's a bit smaller. We can also change the fall off type so it's not perfectly straight and maybe exponential, which is a little bit smoother as it hits the edge of the frame. So we can shut off the preview trigger. And by the way, if you leave it on and you go to another object, it just shuts off and hides the preview. So simple thing, but uh, it'll come in handy for sure. Now again, I might want to change the color. So maybe as it triggers, it also turns, you know, red. And uh, so that's nice and noticeable as it goes off and kind of out of the frame. Dynamic triggering is really about adding animation to your individual objects without having to keyframe it. You can control things like the brightness, the scale, the rotation, and for some of the objects, they have their own custom settings as well. Let's go and take a look at another example. So I'm going to turn my background back on for the scene that uh, maybe I'm working on. This is a cool screenshot from the Cry engine, by the way. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and I've prepared two elements already. And I'm going to turn those on. So the lens flare is doing its thing, and as it reaches the outside of the frame, the whole screen lights up, and then it kind of fades off. 
So these two elements, so if we solo those, the color elements that you're seeing only turn on when the light source touches the edge of the frame. And that can be for any part of the frame. And the light is always on the opposite side of the light source because that's where we set the distance. All right, let's take a look at one more quick example. We'll go to the lens objects and we're going to add a multi iris. So if we scale that up, that's what that element is. But I want to make a few changes. First, let's turn the spread of the multi iris down. So that's really just in the center. And I want to change the object shape from a polygon to a circle. And we'll also scale it up some. Now, the thing about the dynamic triggering again is I only want this object to turn on when the light hits the center. So we'll scroll down to the dynamic triggering. We'll change the trigger type to from center and the trigger mode based on the light position. So when the light touches the center, that's when our trigger is going to be activated. So we'll turn the brightness of the object down to zero since we don't want to see it yet and we'll move the light source into the center. Then we'll turn the brightness for the trigger up and maybe even uh, the scale just a little bit. And we can see what happens as the light touches it, it turns on and as we go away from it, it turns off. Now we can change the fall off type to uh, exponential or maybe even smooth. We can uh, look at the trigger, maybe expand it and uh, turn up the fall off range. And uh, then we have this sort of effect. Now I'm going to scale up the object as a whole and maybe bring the brightness down a little bit. Basically what we have here is an object that only turns on when our light hits the center of the screen and almost as if a flashlight were shined into the lens and it sort of created these rings of light. And that's the power of the dynamic triggering engine.